Okay, in this third and last video of 3.6, we're going to put it all together. If these problems seem hard to you, my suggestion is to go back over uh, the first two videos and make sure you have that down first. Alright, let, let's pick up where we left off last time. Suppose you're given a function and you want to find some important features of the function and sketch the graph. The x-intercepts, remember, are where the numerator is zero, as long as the, the bottom isn't zero there also. So you're going to have an x-intercept at one, multiplicity two, which means it's going to be a turning point, right? Y-intercept, isn't that just f of zero? Uh-oh, f of zero is undefined, so there is no y-intercept. Uh, in terms of the vertical asymptote, uh, that's going to be where the bottom is zero, as long as the top isn't zero also. So you're going to have a vertical asymptote at zero, it's going to have multiplicity two. Remember what that means? On a vertical asymptote, it means both sides are either going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity. In behavior, well, since the top and bottom have the same degree, it looks like it's going to be x squared over x squared, which, in other words, it's going to get close to one. So when you put it all together, you, see if you can sketch the graph, go ahead, hit the pause button, see if you can put all, put all those pieces together and, and uh, sketch a graph of a, of a function that satisfies all those pro properties. Okay, I get this. I get, I get, I get a graph of something like this. It's going to have a zero multi multiplicity 2 at 1. It's going to have a vertical asymptote multiplicity 2 at 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y equal 1. Of course, you could, you could plot a few more points if you want to be more accurate, couldn't you? Okay, for the rest of this video, we're going to go backwards, which means I'm going to give you the graph and some information, and we're going to try to come up with the formula. That's always fun. Is that easier or is that harder? I think some people might think it's harder. I don't know. But if you know what, what to look for, it's not that bad. Okay, we got a rational function. It looks like we have a 0 at 0 multiplicity 2. So that might be an x squared on the top, maybe. It looks like you got vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 1 with odd multiplicity. So I, I, I'm thinking you're going to have an x minus 1 times an x plus 1 on the bottom. Now, so don't forget about this uh, coefficient a. We want to find out what a will have to be. We got the 0 multiplicity 2. We got the vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 1. If you look at the horizontal asymptote, it has to be 2. So you wouldn't want a to be 1. Then the horizontal asymptote would be 1. So to make the horizontal asymptote, the horizontal asymptote 2, how about if a equals 2? That would work, wouldn't it? All right, let's go over here. This one, let's see. This one we're going to look at, uh, looks like a vertical asymptote, multiplicity, even. Maybe an x squared on the bottom. And then we're going to have a x-intercept at 3, negative 1. So maybe an x minus 3 on the top, x plus 1 on the top. And then it looks like we may have to have a uh, horizontal asymptote negative 1. So I'm thinking like this. Start off like this. a times x minus 3 times x plus 1 over x squared. Now what would a have to be so the horizontal asymptote matches up to negative 1? a would have to be negative 1, wouldn't it? There you go. So that looks like a possibility. Let's keep on going. Uh-oh, on this one looks like we may have a uh, hole. Remember what a hole means? At x equal 2, you have a hole. That just means you have an x minus 2 on the top and an x minus 2 on the bottom. So we can just tack that on. Got a vertical asymptote at 1 with odd multiplicity, so maybe an x minus 1 on the bottom. Looks like you have a 0 at negative 2 with odd multiplicity. So put that all together, you got something that looks like this. Make sure you put the constant there, a times x plus 2 over x minus 1, and then we throw on a factor of x minus 2 over x minus 2 to generate that hole there. So what would a have to be? Now there's a couple ways to find a. It, it, if you're not sure that the horizontal asymptote is actually 1, couldn't you also plug in 0, negative 2? That would work too. It turns out if you do that, I'll, I'll let you check this. When you plug in 0, negative 2, you, you should get a equal 1, which, which, which coincides with a horizontal asymptote of 1. So that, that seems to check. So this is a possible formula. All right, let's keep on going. Let's go over here now. This gets a little more challenging. It looks like we got a, an oblique, or a, I call it a linear asymptote. So uh, the top has to have degree one more than the bottom. I'm looking at a uh, vertical asymptote at zero, so odd multiplicity, probably one. And then I have a x-intercept at two and negative one, so something like this. This seems like a possible starting point anyway, right? Now, uh, how do you find a? Well, well let's, let's go this route. It looks like it goes to the point 1, negative 1, so if you, if you plug 1 in for x, negative 1 in for y, again, I'll, I'll let you check this, hit the pause button and check, but if you do that, you'll find a is 1 half. So if you, um, if you plug that in, a 1 half becomes a 2 down here. Uh, I'm still a little bit concerned about this uh, linear asymptote. Is that going to work? Well, what is the equation of this linear asymptote? If you look really carefully, 
it looks like it, it has um, slope one half and it goes to the point zero negative one half so it might be uh, y equal one half x minus one half something like that if you use division we actually don't need long division you can just divide everything by 2x you get this so if you notice I just said the 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 linear asymptote looks like one half x minus one half so that does check this goes to zero this is your linear asymptote we got it okay try this one hit the pause button this one's kind of tricky. This turns out to be a polynomial function, and you know it looks like degree 3, 0 is at negative 3, 0, and 1, so it looks like this. How do you find A? How about picking the point 1, negative 2? You plug that in, and I get A equals negative 1 half. You can check, hit the pause button, and you can verify this. Okay, this one's kind of hard, I think. This is a rational function, but notice there's no vertical asymptotes. Yet you have a horizontal asymptote at 2. How could that be? Well, let's start off with the easy part. It's going to have a x intercept at 1 and negative 1. So you have x plus 1 times x minus 1. So on the top you could have x squared minus 1 if you multiply it out. Or, yeah, if you, if you, um, if you multiply it out. Now, furthermore, uh, you have to have the same degree on the top and bottom. So you have to have an x squared on the bottom, but you can't have a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to call it x squared plus some positive number. I know what A is though. If the horizontal asymptote is 2, doesn't A have to equal 2? How do you find B though? The way you find B would be to be clever. I'm just going to pick a point 0, negative 1. F of 0 is negative 1. Again, I'm going to ask you to ver verify this, but if you plug in 0 for x and negative 1 for y, you can actually solve this equation for B. You get B equals 2. So your final answer is F of x equals 2 times the quantity x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 2. All right. In these last ones, um, let's. These aren't quite as bad. I don't think. I'll give you some information and ask you to find the equation. This first one isn't too bad. Once you try these on your own, hit the pause button. See if you can come up with a possible formula. Okay. This first one, since you have an x-intercept at two, vertical asymptote at one, it could look like this. Horizontal asymptote at three. Doesn't a have to be three? So th this should work right here f of x equals 3 times the quantity x minus 2 over x minus 1. Try this one. On this one, there's a hole at 2. You're going to have to have a factor of x minus 2 on top and bottom. x minus up to 0. Vertical asymptote at 3. This should do it. Try this one. This, this one's kind of sneaky. Okay, on this one it starts out okay. You have a, you have a, a horizontal, uh, well you have an x-intercept at 2, vertical asymptote at 1, uh, horizontal asymptote at, at 2, so everything looks fine. But the problem with this is f of 0 does not equal 8. How do you, how do you make f of 0 equal 8? And the trick is, you could play around with the multiplicity on the top and bottom. I made the mul multiplicity 2 on top and bottom. That way you'll still have a horizontal asymptote of a, horizontal asymptote of a, of 2, but now, f of, if you check this, f of 0 does equal 8. That's kind of sneaky, huh? Alright, try, try these two. Okay, this one's exponential. Uh, let's assume it has the form f of x equals a times e to the kx plus c. Hit the pause button, see if you can finish it. Okay, first of all, we're going to uh, observe that c equals 2 because that's your vertical shift. Your vertical shift is your horizontal asymptote. Now, how do you find a? The way you find a is to actually use the y-intercept as 0, 5. Notice when you plug in 0 for x, this whole drop thing becomes 1, so a equals 3. Now, you can find k by actually um, plugging in the point 1, 8. You plug in 8 for y and 1 for x, you can use natural logs and solve for k is ln 4 thirds, put it all together, there's your function. Okay, last one. Try this one on your own. Okay, I get this. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.